فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم معاذ said I asked Aisha رضي الله عنها what is the reason that a menstruating woman completes the fast but she does not complete the prayers she Aisha رضي الله عنها said are you a haruriya I said I am not a haruriya but I simply want to inquire she said we passed through this period of menstruation and we were ordered to complete the fasts but were not ordered to complete the prayers عن معاذة بنت عبد الله العدوية قالت سألت العدوية العدوية قالت سألت عائشة رضي الله عنها فقالت ما بال الحيض تقضي الصوم ما بال الحيض تقضي الصوم ولا تقضي الصلاة فقالت أحرورية أنت قلت لست بحرورية ولكني أسأل قالت كان يصيبنا ذلك فنؤمر بقضاء الصوم ولا نؤمر ولا نؤمر بقضاء الصلاة متفق عليه. This hadith is حكم الحائض والنفاس. The woman who is what who is on her menstruation. Are you with me? And she's on her postnatal bleeding. What does she have to do? Does she have to bring back her fasting? Does she? The woman who's on her menstruation in the month of Ramadan. Are you with me? Is she allowed to bring back her fasting? Does she bring back her fasting? Sorry. Does she have to? Does she have to bring back the prayer? So let's look at the issue of rationality. People use aqal, right? Lashan. What's more important, salah or fasting? The greater thing, she's not told to bring it back. The one that's less greater is told for them to bring it back. Are you with me, brothers? You find nowadays many Muslims who like to use the issue of rationality. If it doesn't rationally make sense to them, they're Muslims, they say they're Muslims. They call them the aqlariyun. They'll say to you, it doesn't make sense. It does not make sense to me. Give another example. To the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they came to him when the ayah came down. Uh, Don't eat what Allah's name has not been mentioned in it. وَإِنَّهُ لَفِسْقِ وَإِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ لَيُوحُونَ إِلَىٰ أَوْلِيَائِهِمْ لِيُجَادِلُوكُمْ فَإِنْ أَطَعْتُمُوهُمْ إِنَّكُمْ لَمُشْرِكُونَ This ayah came down in response to an issue that they brought, which is that the Prophet ﷺ said to the companion, what did he say to them? If you slaughter and the, the uh, blood comes out of the animal, are you allowed to eat it? And you say, Bismillah, are you allowed to eat it? You are allowed to eat it. What about if the animal dies by itself and you didn't slaughter it? So are you guys saying to me right now, what you killed is more better than what Allah killed? You guys are saying now, what I killed in my hand is halal and is good. What Allah killed is not good. They said this to the Prophet. The shubha they brought to the Prophet and the companions. Are you with me? And we have people who do that today. So, we have another issue that people do which is, Ali ibn Abi Talib said, If the religion was about, about intellects and IQ, just that's, it was all about intellects and rationality, it would have been, the wiping of the bottom of the leg would have been more befitting than the top part of the leg. When you're doing the mash'a al khufain right? Because the bottom part is what you walk on and it's the part that's dirty. The top part is clean. Why are you going to wipe over that? Listen to this, brothers. When we humans try to use our rationality or our intellect, we've really got the pixel of the whole picture. That's what we have with us. So we've got a limited ability, we're limited in our look. Allah sees the whole picture, He sees everything, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And His ruling is based upon what's around and what you can't see, what we can't see, right? 
And that's exactly what happened. I'll give you an example of something like that. Nabiullah Nuh, what did he do? Nuh, what did he do to his son when he saw his son? He said to him, come with me. What did his son say to him? Sa'awi ila jabali ya'asimuni min al Are you with me, brothers? Nuh alayhi salatu alayhi salatu wassalam, is on the land. His son is climbing the a mountain. And he's like, if a flood happens, this mountain is going to save, from, for, save me. Is that, rational, is, that rational, is that a rational or is that a logical absurdity? It's rational. Like, that's smart. That's true. A mountain, a hill, tall, water goes, people are going to die. You're going to come down, everything's cool. Are you with me, brothers? Here, what happened was Aqal verse the text. He says, قَالَ لَا عَصِمَ الْيَوْمَ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمْ My son, no. No one can save you today. صح? And what happened? وَحَالَ بَيْنَهُمَ الْمَوْجُ فَكَانَ Ibn Taymiyyah said, in his book, Daru Ta'aradu Al-Aql wa Al-Naql, he's the one who extracted this. He said, when he used his aql, and Nabi Allah, used his revelation, the, re- the result that came out was in favor of the text, the revelation, or the... Or was it in favor of the, the aql and the intellect that was used by his son? The text. فَحَالَ بَيْنَهُمَ الْمَوْجُ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْمُغْرَقِينَ Are you with me, brothers? Nabiullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he gave this ruling, Aisha, a woman, came to her. Look at the Sahabs, how they were. Once they had a text, they didn't care about what brain you used and how smart you thought. They have a text. They believe this more than your restricted, narrow intellects. The text was stronger to them. Pay attention to this. A woman comes and she said to Aisha, "Ma balu al-ha'idhi taqdi al-sawma, wala wala taqdi al-salata." Why is it that the woman who's fasting, sorry, the woman who's on her menstruation, postnatal bleeding, she has to bring back the fasting, but she doesn't have to bring back the prayer? How is that possible? Aisha radiallahu anha didn't say, "Whoa, well, you're, you're smart, mashallah." Look at it like that. That's a good point. He said, "She said to a haruriya to anti." Haruriya are a group who are a group of the Khawarij. Harura, Harura was a place close to Kufa. It was a place in Iraq, close to Kufa. Are you with me, brothers? That's where they stayed. When they ran away from they, uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, when they wanted to go against him. They went to a place called Harura. That's where they stayed. And they used to be called Haruriyun. Sah? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala ana, what did she do? She said, are you Haruri? This shows you. Scholars, they do but from this. They said, if a person resembles a group in a statement that he says, you can ask him if he's from that group. If a person says to you, Mut'a, for example, you can say to are you Rafidi? He has the right to say, no, I'm not. I'm going not to do that. Are you with me? But you have the right to say to them, are you a Haruri? Or are you this? Aisha asked her. Even if that person is from the general mass. This woman was from Ammi. She didn't know anything. Aisha wanted to verify. Are you, is, that, is that what the group you're on? She said to her, no, I'm not. Okay. Then Aisha radiallahu anha responded and she said to her, the woman said, La, lastu bi haruriyatin. I am not a haruri. Walakini as'al, I'm only asking. Aisha said to her, okay. If that's what the case is, kana yusibuna dhalika. That used to happen to us. Menstruations and postnatal bleeding used to have to happen to us at the time of the Prophet. Fanu'maru bi qadai al-sawmi. We used, used to be commanded to bring back the fasting. Wala nu'maru bi qadai al-salati. And we weren't commanded to bring back the prayer. We're slaves. We're slaves. The master spoke. The master tells us what to do. We submit and we hear. Don't use your brain and leave that alone. That's what Aisha said to her. Sah. From the understanding she said to her is we will command it. Are you with me, brothers? And that shows you the Sahab as how far they were from these groups. They did involve themselves with it and they were far from it. Especially when they had, when they had the evidences. When they... When they had the evidences.
No. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to observe itikaf in the last 10 days of Ramadan. عن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يعتكف العشر الأواخر من رمضان متفق عليه. This hadith is the issue of اعتكاف. اعتكاف. عبد الله بن عمر narrated that the Prophet كان رسول الله يعتكف العشر that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he used to do اعتكاف. I'tikaf means luzub al-masjid, staying in the masjid. And it is especially al-asharat al-awakhir, the last 10 days of min Ramadan. That's when the Prophet used to do it, alayhi, salatu wa salam, hatta tawafahu Allah, until Allah took his soul. And anything that the Prophet sallallahu did it, ala wajhi al-ibadati wa taqarrub. If the Prophet did something in trying to get closer to Allah through it, then we do it like that. And if the Prophet did not do it, getting close to Allah by doing it, we're not allowed to do it. The Prophet was a human being, right? The Prophet sometimes would go out into, to do call of nature, right? Are you with me, brothers? He would go out to do call of nature. You're not allowed to go and say, I'm, I'm, got, I'm getting closer to Allah by doing the call of nature. Jazakallah khairan. In where the Prophet did it. Are you with me? I'm not allowed to. Because when the Prophet did that, he did, did he do it at min taqarrub? No, he didn't. That's why some of the scholars they said, are you allowed to, are you allowed to let your hair grow long and like the Prophet والسلام, and make your hair reach your shoulders, doing it to get closer to Allah, because the Prophet did that. Are you with me? As Shaykh Muhammad bin Salih al-Uthaymeen, he mentions in the Sharah of Shama'il al muhammadiyah He doesn't mention that Shaykh Abdul Razak ibn Abdul Muhsin al Abad al Badr brings the statement of Shaykh Ibn Uthaymin. If you go to Shama'il al Muhammadiyah, that the issue of letting your hair grow, if you're in a community, especially the people I'm from, my Somali community, if I let my hair grow, they think I become a gangster. They're going to say, So when I go back to my country, if I let my hair grow, they're going to be like, He's from the UK. He let his hair grow. La ilaha. So based on that, it's not hikmah and it is not sunnah for me to let my beard hair grow. I have to look at what urf and the custom of the people I'm from. Because when the Prophet did it, he did it out of his people. This is what they used to do. It's the custom of his people. Sah? And it is not a matter of taqarrub or whatnot. The beard like is an exception. The beard is an exception. Then the command came regarding it. Are you with me, brothers? It's an exception. The Prophet specifically commanded it now. That's the issue now. This is the issue now. Can I do I get rewarded for looking like the Prophet or dressing like him, doing the things that he used to do on a normal basis? I want to walk like him. Like when the Prophet it was said that when he would speak to somebody. He would never talk to them from the side of the, his neck. He would never talk to them like that. He would turn his whole body around and face them fully. Give his whole body to them. Sah? Good manners, alayhi salatu wasalam. If you say, I want to do all of that and I want to do how... Are you with me? I want to walk like him. I want to talk like him. I want to act like him. Is it permissible? Is it not? That's a sharah in Shama'il al I think we should do... A lesson on the Prophet and the way he looked, and then inshallah ta'ala discuss that issue furthermore. I did it once, Shama'il al Muhammadiyah. Part of it is parts of it is recorded. Inshallah ta'ala I expanded on it more there. Now I'm gonna go to it right now. <clears throat> so the person who's doing the i'tikaf has to do the i'tikaf in a masjid where's the jama'ah. And that masjid has to have a khutbah going on. To be on the safer side. You can't do itikaf on your university masjid. صح? You can't go to your university and say, do I mean itikaf in... No, you can't. No. And that condition is strong. 
Are you allowed to do i'tikaf in other than the three masjids? Are you allowed to? Are you allowed? Mecca, Medina, and Baytul Maqdis. Harrarah Allah. May Allah free it from there. Zionists. Are we allowed to go to... Are we allowed to uh, do i'tikaf in other than those three masjids? The Prophet ﷺ, he said that there's no i'tikaf except in these three masjids. Alayhi salatu wasalam. But Allah wa ta'ala, what did he, when he said in the Quran, what did he say? Huh? What did Allah wa ta'ala say? But what's the deal for the ayah? Fil masajid. Huh? Fil masajid. Al masajid is general. Alif al istighraqiyya general. Masajid. Some scholars, they took the opinion which is that that this generalization is specified with the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. That the three masjids are only the places. And I humbly, accepting that there is another opinion out there, I hold the opinion that there's no i'tikaf except these three masjids. Khalas. But there are strong scholars of knowledge and understanding and comprehension of the religion who hold the other side Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen Ibn Baz and others who are noble who hold the opinion that you're allowed to do i'tikaf in other than the three messages so as we said it's a valid strong difference of opinion in this issue that one needs to respect but they could have a discussion regarding it if they wish to and have a uh, fruitful understanding from it Um, when does the i'tikaf start? So the issue of i'tikaf outside Ramadan, can you do it? Are you with me? This hadith that we're standing of, what does it say? Are you with me? But others have come and they brought other arguments forward. And the arguments that they brought is that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that waiting between two prayers is what? So they, it's like you're in a prayer. So some of the scholars, they said that's an i'tikaf. Also, there's discussions regarding what's the muddatul i'tikaf. What's the shortest period that i'tikaf can be? Can it be one, 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 one hour, one minute? How, how long is it? Is it one day? Is it two days? What's the minimum a person can say, I did i'tikaf? Are you with me, brothers? There's a, a book written, inshallah ta'ala, if I do get the chance, uh, if I do stay and I don't travel this week. There's a book called Al-Insaf, written by Abdul Haq Al-Laknawi, Al-Hanafi, the Hanafi scholar. If I do get the chance, inshallah ta'ala, and it happens I don't go by next week, by next weekend, I think we should do next weekend, maybe that book, the issue of Al-Itikaf. The hukum and the hakam and the aqwal of the fuqaha regarding it. Go into a bit more details. We could do that, inshallah ta'ala. Um, you have to stay the whole day, 24 hours. We, that's what I said. That book will give it justice. There's a lot of muqaddamat that I don't want to I don't want to go over right now. There's a lot of introductions that we have to agree upon. That's if we do stay like it. I do manage to stay. But for what we know now, right, right now is that a person can stay for a day, inshallah ta'ala, and that considers, they can consider that to be a i'tikaf, a day. They could do that. And the Prophet ﷺ especially, in Hadith Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, man i'tikaf ma'ai, fal i'atakif al-ashar al-awakhir. Anyone who wants to do i'tikaf with me, the Prophet said he, to, he should do it at the last 10 days. What is it that the person can do whilst they're in the i'tikaf? First of all, the person needs to know they are munqati' They've disconnected themselves from everything else. And they've come here to worship Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So what is prohibited from you is sexual relationship with your wife. Even when you're not fasting at night time, you can't creep up to, out of the masjid and go. You cannot do that. You cannot also even kiss your wife whilst you're in the itikaf. If she does come, if she comes and visits you, one is not allowed to do that. Also, the person is not allowed to leave the masjid illa li hajah. Darura, necessity, a need that makes you God. Such as ightisal, if you want to have a bath. Or if janaba happens to you, etc. Or if you need to go to the toilet. 
And of course, we don't have that problem because the toilets are in the masjids. Back in the days, it wasn't in the masjid, it was outside. Are you with me? Also, if the person wants to go out to get food, if necessity hits, one, if it's a group of people, everybody shouldn't go. They should just make one or two people go, or one person go and get the food. That person who's going is going for a necessity. Are you with me? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha she she said kana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam la yadkhulu albayt illa li hajatin idha kana mu'takifan that the messenger he would never enter the house unless there was a need for it unless there illa li haja unless there is a a need for it you need to know the prophet's house was stuck to the masjid alayhi salatu wasallam as for other acts of obedience acts of obedience that are not obligatory. Such as going and visiting a person who's sick. Part, go and participating in a janazah. And other than that, فَلَيَفْ عَلِيُّ not allowed to do it. You're not allowed to do it. Unless, unless you conditioned, unless you made a condition in your beginning of your itikaf. And this is the issue we need to talk about. If you place a condition before the itikaf, that you will go... In that particular day, because you know there's a family member you need to visit, and you do make it, then that's an exception. Based on the two opinions of the scholars. Brothers and sisters, I've seen a lot of people do itikaf in the masajids, and I realize they use their phones. This goes against the concept of what itikaf is. The whole concept of itikaf is you're actually here for what? As salah. Tilawat al Quran, reciting the Quran, al dhikr, benefiting from your time. Are you with me? Benefiting from what? Benefiting from your time. Seeking knowledge. Studying books of tafsir and tawheed and hadith and other than that. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned the hadith of Safiya bin Tuhuyay. She came and visited him. And you're allowed to, if your wife comes and visits you too, you can say, how's everything? Are the kids all right? Are they fine? Okay, mashallah, there's nothing wrong. Gas is there, electricity, everything's running smooth. Nothing you want. Okay, good. Important things that a husband would want to know about his house. Once you found out the inf information that you needed, khalas. You just tell your wife, hey, it's time to go now. Are you with me? And you can walk her a bit further and you tell her to go. That's like the Prophet did with Safiya bin Tuhuyay. She said, I, I visited him. One night I came and visited him. I started to talk to him. After she spoke to him for a little bit, he said he stood, she stood up and she left and she made her way back. So the husband is allowed to ask his wife the issues that she needs to know about the things that he needs to know, sorry, about the household. He's allowed to ask. Nowadays, what takes that, if she doesn't come, is, is calling her. You're allowed to call her once or twice to see what she's up to, you know, if the house is good. Are you with me? So you don't want to be, you don't want to be away for 10 days and the whole house burns down and it's going to happen. You're the man of the house. You need to know what's happening. Huh? You need to know what's happening in the house. Now, brothers, we've taken 20 hadiths. The author, author, the author he wrote those 20 hadiths for the first 20 days of Ramadan. Now we're going to enter the next 10 days of Ramadan, the last 10 days of Ramadan. So we're now going to enter, and as we said before, the author, the way he wrote his book was what? Every day, one hadith in Ramadan. That was the whole point. Like you study one hadith a day. And this was meant to be at the, when the last 10 days is about to start. So the itikaf was actually meant to be taught the night when everybody's coming to itikaf. And you're telling people tonight is the itikaf, go in. That's how he authored the book, which is, I think it should also be taught again in Ramadan by one of you guys. You guys studied it now, sah? Allahumma hal ballagh, fal yuballigh shahid minkum al ghaib. The ones who were here should convey it to those who weren't here. So now we're going to enter the next. We're going to take five, inshallah ta'ala. I don't know what happened, Brother Qasim promised, uh, he said to me he's going to order pizza. And he's not here, there's no way to... So, he said it, Allah is my witness, he said that, he said pizza, I heard it clearly. And I'm expecting there's going to be chicken and there's pineapple and stuff in there, so don't worry brothers. Uh, and then inshallah ta'ala, We'll finish today. Look how we're going smooth, right? We've got 10 more. We're, we've already done 10. Just today, we, no, 8 we did. And we can finish the next 10.
bi'idhnillahi al-kareem. So we might be able to finish before time. We'll leave the rest for Q&A. So questions you guys might want to have, things you might want to know. Insha'Allah ta'ala. Aisha radiallahu anha said, with the start of the last 10 days of Ramadan, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would pray all the night and would keep his family awake for the prayers. He tied his lower garment and devoted himself entirely to prayer and supplication. And in the wording of Muslim, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to strive more in worship during the last 10 days of Ramadan than he strove in any other time. عن عائشة رضي الله عنها قالت كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا دخل العشر وأحيا الليلة وأيقظ أهله وجد وشد المئزر متفق عليه وفي رواية لمسلم كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يشتهد في العشر الأواخر ما لا يشتهد في غيره <تصفيق> Aisha radiallahu anha, she tells us in this hadith, Dalilun, this is an evidence. This hadith is an evidence. And it talks about al ijtihad to work hard. Fi ashar al awakhir min Ramadan, the last 10 days of Ramadan. And a lot of people, brothers, the momentum doesn't build in Ramadan from the beginning. The whole point of Ramadan is what? The first couple of days you're getting used to everything, you're building up. When the last 10 days come, you shouldn't die. It's when it sparks for you. It's now you're going to go in. You know, at the beginning of a race, when you're a fast runner like me, I, I, don't, I don't let it out once. I'm always smart. I just let them go. Oh, look at them. Subhanallah. They really think they're fast, huh? Subhanallah. Just let them run. But then, when we get to the... Clo- they go, <laughs> they're breathing heavily. I'm, I'm gone. They're eating my dust. I got, I got witnesses, I got, I got witnesses. My was video, the live footage. Some brothers were here, I don't want to say names. They, they look down when they see me. Brothers. So that's how Ramadan is. The first 20 days, you're building up to it. When the last 10 days comes, that's ijtihad, hard work. Hard work. Aisha said, Kan and Nabi, the Prophet was, Dawam. The word Kana, which show, shows Dawam, consistency. When the 10 days of Ramadan comes in, means he gave life to the night. He would spend the whole night praying. Sahirahu. It would keep him awake, alayhi salatu wasalam. Obedience. And he would sleep very little, alayhi salatu wasalam. And the reason is because the reason why the Aisha used Ahya Layla. Is because what's the opposite to death? What's the, what's the opposite to hayat? Death, right? And sleeping is what? It's death. So he wouldn't. He would be awake. He would be alive. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Ibadah. Remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some may put i'tirab forward and say, what about the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As where the Prophet prohibited? What did he do? He prohibited the person from praying what? Like that. And that hadith we said, remember yesterday we spoke about it, based on the statement of uh, Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali from his kitab, Lata'if al-Ma'arif, we quoted it yesterday, which is, is that when it is done consistently, and mudawama, you can't do that every time in the year. But when Ramadan comes, it's an exception. It's an exception. وَأَيْقَضَ أَهْلَهُ means what? He would make his wives wake up. He would make sure they are also out to benefit with them. And this shows, brothers, a husband involves his family in the knowledge and the benefits. They're part of the program. They're part of the program. Husband ain't just doing his own dhikr and his own little thing, huh? The wife is in there with you. If you're not able, you facilitate things for her. You facilitate it for her. Whether it means that you need to sometimes look after the kids or whatnot, you do so. So she can participate in the khayr and the dhikr and the ibadah in this time. Wajadda and he would work hard. Wajadda min ijtihad he come with. Alayhi salatu salam. Wajadda mi'zarahu. Shadda mi'zarahu is when he, he would tie his butt. 
is uh, it's a kinaya. Kinaya meaning what? It's an indirect way of saying that he would stay away from his wives. Uh, he wouldn't have any relationship with his wife. Shadda Mizarahu means he knows it's not the time to go and spend time with his wives and have any relationship with them. Now, my beloved brothers and sisters, Ramadan is tarbiyah, as I said before, right? It's a madrasa. It's a madrasa of tarbiyah, right? Cultivation. What's the most important thing in Allah's eyes? Which actions? The actions which are the ending, right? The Prophet ﷺ, what did he say? إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِينَ إِنَّمَا الْأَدَوَاتُ الْحَصْرِ The reality of a person's actions is the ending. You can be a believer all you want. It's the last moments of your life, brothers. This is what matters. وَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ حَتَّى مَا يَكُونُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ إِلَّا دِرَاءَ فَيَسْبِقُ عَلِيَ الْكِتَابِ فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ فَيَسْخُلُهَا وَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ حَتَّى مَا يَكُونُ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ إِلَّا دِرَاءَ فَيَسْبِقُ عَلِيَ الْكِتَابِ فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ فَيَدْخُلُهَا You can sixty years of your life if you work hard, and the last two three minutes you die, then you disbelieve and you die upon kufr. So what really matters is the khawatim, the endings. And that's what Ramadan is about. All that 20 days you were working hard, what really matters is these last 10 days. And the Prophet knew that. So that's why he would go in with those last 10 days. Alayhi salatu wassalam. وَلِذَلِكَ أَسَّائِبُ بْنُ يَزِيدٍ He said, أَمَرَ عُمَرُ بْنُ الْخَطَّابِ عُمَرْ كَمَانْدِدْ أُبَيْ بْنُ كَعْبْ وَتَمِيمَ الدَّارِي أُبَيْ بْنُ كَعْبْ and Tamim al-Dari, those two companions, he commanded both of them. أن يقوم للناس that they stand for the people بإحدى عشر ركعة تولي والركعات وقد كان القارئ يقرأ بمئتين each one would read two hundred and two um, two hundred two hundred verses حتى كنا نعتمد على العص عصاي that he would it would be so long that we would lean onto our sticks that we would get sticks to lean on or we would lean on things because our legs will go for how long they would pray. مِنْ طُولِ الْقِيَامِ وَمَا كُنَّا نَنْصَرِفُ None of us would leave the prayer. إِلَّا فِي فُرُوغِ الْفَجْرِ Until Fajr came in. We'd pray. The last ten nights, you know what it is? Is that the taraweeh should be, and the tajr should be in. And the people should just be given 15 to 20 minutes to do their suhoor. Go in to Fajr again. The last ten days of Ramadan. Sahih? That's how it was for the salaf of Hadi al-Ummah. Pay attention to this. When you're in Ramadan, you need to come with two jihads. The first one is jihadun bin nahar, jihad at daytime. Okay? Jihad at daytime. Ala siyami by fasting. By fasting. And the next one is wa jihadun bin layli. And a jihad at night with what? Ala al qiyami. By praying. So daytime, your, 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 your jihad is a fasting. How is it? You're protecting it from what? You're not coming with fisk. You're not going off. You're not speaking foul language. If a person insults you, you're enduring patience. This is what you're doing. With your jihad all day. You're norm- you normally get angry when people say this to you. You're restricting yourself. All day, your jihad. Then night comes in. The jihad turns onto you. And when, what does it become now? Pray again. So those two jihad, if you don't realize, that's what Ramadan is about. You're in trouble. You're in trouble if you don't realize that. And anyone who realizes that those are the two things he needs to work on, daytime, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fast. And at nighttime, I'm going to what? Qiyam. I mean, I ain't going to miss out. That he has fully benefited and taken the, uh, reaps, re- reaped the fruit from Ramadan. Also, my beloved brothers and sisters, in this month, a lot of the people, what they do is, they make their wives and their spouses spend a lot of time in the kitchen. They make the wife spend, and she's in the kitchen. Wallahi. And the ibadah all became, Ramadan for her has become more of a... Don't do that. My advice, brothers, this is not time of food and eating and drinking. Tell your wife to cook the, cook the most basic food. Are you with me, brothers? The ba- most basic food. And tell her to worship Allah. Are you with me, brothers? If you can help her in the family house and you can cook with her, that was the sunnah of the Prophet. 
عليه الصلاة والسلام كان في مهنة أهله he was in the service and the help of his family عليه الصلاة والسلام but that month is not for you to place so much burden onto her which she is then not able to fast properly because all day she was in the kitchen and then look at it how sad it is when the iftar comes she can't even eat the iftar because she was beat. she spent it in the kitchen for too long has anyone of you ever cooked here? Has anyone here ever cooked? Those who cooked, no. Uh, I haven't, not much. Other than Callum's Frosties and Wheat of X's. So, if you cook, there's a website called Hawash. I don't know if you guys know about it. It's a Somali website. Sisters cheat on that. That's the website they use to cook food for you guys, brothers. And if you get married, when the internet cuts and, the, and they cut your internet, you realize what kind of food you eat. And the internet is down in the house. <laughs> Anyways, the point is, if you cook in the kitchen and you spend time in the kitchen, you realize that there you can't eat. It's like you ate everything, the smoke, everything went in your mouth. It's just, you don't have the appetite for it. So she's cooking something, she's not going to eat much from it. And she's in there all day. La shaka wa she has so much reward for it. No doubt Allah is going to give her, if she comes with good intention, it's a reward for her. But Ramadan is not for that. Are you with me, brothers? It's a tilawa with dhikr wa tas and the family are together on this. Ibadah, worship. Are you doing this? That's what it's about. That is what it's about. So place that in your wives. Nashat and effort and hard work. This is it. This is the month. Every problem that we may have, any hardship that we may go through, inshallah, this is the month everything can be solved. Naam. Naam. Inshallah. No doubt that, that when we look at the Sharia, when we look at the Sharia, when it comes to righteous deeds, there are deeds which are exclusive to you. Are you with me, brothers? They're exclusive to you. It doesn't surpass you and it doesn't transmit to anybody else. It's a good, and the Sharia like, likes that, but what the Sharia prefers more is the good deed that goes beyond you. So when you do itikaf, you're really doing it for who? Yourself. And for this help that you're doing for the people is greater. So the ibadah which is qasira is not like the ibadah, the ibadah which is muta'adiyah. It's better than the ibadah which is qasira. Sah? The one who teaches is better than the one who prays in awafil. If somebody goes, comes here right there, all oh, this time we were doing the class, they were praying, 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 praying. They are not like the one who's the teaching, the teaching itself. Sahih? Because this is ta'adi. This is exclusive to you. Now.